Dispensationalism rejects the doctrine that God has since the fall but one plan of salvation for all mankind and affirms that God has been through the ages administering various and diverse plans of salvation for various groups. You see what dispensationalism believes in? This is re real, genuine dispensationalism believes in this, see? Different salvation plans. So let's look at the Old Testament. What is salvation in the Old Testament? Notice that there is faith and works involved. There is faith and works involved for salvation. Ezekiel 18, verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. All right, you're not going to be a saved soul. You're going to die in your sin. Why? Because look at verse 21. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Notice right here that a wicked person can still live if what? He repents and turns away from all his wickedness and starts doing works of righteousness. What if you're a righteous person? Okay, let's say you lived righteously all your life, but then in the end you messed up. What happens to you? Tough on you, because look at verse 24. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not, what? Be mentioned. Wow! In his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he, what? Die. You will die in your sins. See, dying in your sins. That's salvation right there. Ezekiel chapter 18 is often cited as a proof text to teach that an individual must turn from their sins in order to be saved from hell. First and foremost, it is imperative that we understand that turning from your sins or turning from your evil way is works. And the word of God is crystal clear that salvation from the penalty of sin is not of works, both in the New Testament and the Old Testament. Jonah chapter 3 verse 10 says, And God saw their works, don't miss that, that they what? Turned from their evil way, or turned from their sins. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Notice, God sees turning from your evil way as works. It's irrelevant how you see it, or the preacher sees it, how does God see it? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of what? Works. Not of turning from your evil way. Not of turning from your sins, lest any man should boast. If salvation from the penalty of sin was by works in the Old Testament then undoubtedly they could boast of their salvation. Romans chapter 4 verse 1 says, What shall we say then that Abraham, Old Testament or New Testament, our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, notice this, he hath whereof to glory, but not before who? God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, watch this, his water baptism is counted for righteousness. No, his turning from sin is counted for righteousness. No, his faith is counted for for righteousness. Verse 6, even as David, Old Testament or new, also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, without water baptism, without turning from your evil way, without turning from sin. Verse 7 says, saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. 
Contextually, Ezekiel chapter 18 is referring to a physical judgment, not eternal condemnation. God is warning the individual of sin's consequence in this life. Verse 30 says, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, notice this, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. The mistake that is often made when dealing with this passage is people see the word soul and immediately think of what? A soul's salvation from hell. However, the usage of this word is simply referring to the individual person. For example, if I said to you, there wasn't a soul in sight, am I referring to a literal human soul or a physical person? The obvious answer is the latter. To further substantiate this, Look at Ezekiel chapter 14, starting off in verse 13. Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out mine hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Verse 14, don't miss this. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, physically speaking, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. Notice the usage of the word soul when referring to a physical deliverance from temporal judgment. The same is true of Ezekiel chapter 18, a passage pertaining to physical life and physical death, the consequences of sin in this time, death, destruction, ruin, and the blessing brought by obedience to God. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 27 says, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. 